She focuses on economic development, especially in China. So, Professor, I want to get your take on uh, the developments of Friday. Talks now extended through the weekend, progress being made, uh, both sides being positive. What's your reaction to this? Um, so the most recent talks have focused on some very thorny issues like, you know, technology transfer, intellectual property rights protection, agriculture um, services, and currency. So the fact that the both sides show some optimism about, you know, possible deals, progress, I think that's a great sign. And as President Trump mentioned, that he's willing to extend the deadline. Um, so instead of, you know, raising the tariff rate in March the 1st, he might extend it for another month. So I think my reactions to this is uh, it seems that there is some progress to be made. But at the same time, uh, we need to be cautiously optimistic because we just heard um, USTR Robert Lighthizer said that, you know, there's still a few great hurdles. So we'll wait and see and see, um, you know, what we come out from the two extra days of negotiations. President Trump also mentioned that any major issues that are remaining will be decided uh, and agreed upon by he and President Xi. Um, what do you think the Chinese take is on this? Do you think Beijing will agree with that? Um, I think on a number of issues, um, so remember that President Trump has extended list of, you know, um, demands, um, about 142 items. So I think some of those items, you know, they are aligned with China's long-term interest, right? So things like increased market access, you know, try to reduce the trade imbalances between the two countries and, you know, enforce intellectual property rights protections. So I think all these items um, have some room for um, China's concession because they still meet China's long-term interest. But on issues like ending China's government support in state-owned enterprises or end government's monopoly or quasi-monopoly in some industries like telecommunication or finance, and also on the issue of you know, China's, Chinese government support on you know, technology, I think all of these demands are very difficult, if not impossible, for President Xi to cave in. Uh, because they are China's national priority, and um, it would be difficult um, to make concessions on those fronts. And interestingly, I think you know all different countries implement some kinds of industrial policies to support the technological innovations. Right? The U.S. is no different. Um, President Trump just signed the um, you know executive order to support the development of AI just two weeks ago. So I think you know it makes no sense for um, the U.S. to demand China not to support its technological development um, by the government. What do you make of reports coming uh, from today that China could buy $1.2 trillion of U.S. goods? I mean, that's a, that's a new number we're hearing now. Absolutely. This is totally mind-boggling number. Um, if we put this in perspective, last year, 2018, China just imported about $111 billion worth of Chinese, uh, of American products. So we're talking about more than a 10 times increase in the Chinese imports from the U.S. Um, so for one is, you know, you wonder whether or not the U.S. can come up with a production capacity, you know, given its current pretty full employment, to come up with this extra production and shipped out to China. And on the other hand, you're also thinking about, you know, China can only buy certain types of products from China. Some of the high-tech products are simply out of question. So the question then is, you know, what the U.S. is going to sell to China to meet that $1.2 trillion of, you know, U.S. exports to China. And we are one week away from that March 1st deadline. I know a lot has been said. We've talked about the possible extension. Uh, but President Trump will be in the neighborhood next week meeting with Kim Jong-un. Are we likely to see some sort of meeting then? Or do you think it's more likely that we'll see something at Mar-a-Lago at the end of March? Um, I think that this, the, the negotiations will continue. Um, and I believe that the deadline will be extended. Um, I think the U.S. negotiation team um, are, you know, they are divided, right? We have people who are more hawkish, like Robert Lighthizer, wanted to have a complete win that China is going to cave in in most of the items that they demanded. But then we also have, you know, um, Treasury Secretary Mnuchin, who is aiming for, you know, a framework plus further negotiations. So I think now President Trump seemed to side it with the latter. 
um, view that you know we need to build a positive framework, but we need to open for more negotiations because some of these items uh, would really take a long time um, to flesh out the details. Um, so they have signed six memorandum of understandings, um, but a lot of details, especially how some of those trade agreements are going to be enforced, um, still need a lot more time for negotiations. All right, Professor Yan Liang, thank you so much for joining us from Portland.